In this video, I'm going to show you the technique I use to color faces of different forms, shapes, and sizes. But before then, let's get some light in here because you can't even see my face right now. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Mohammed Agbadi and today we're going to be talking about coloring faces in Photoshop. Faces are one of the most important elements of an image and immediately draw the viewer to the character's facial expressions. This makes it really crucial to be able to nail the character's emotions at one glance and also direct the viewer's eye to different parts of the image. The head is made up of various muscles working together simultaneously, moving the face around creating each of our various different expressions. Surprise, disgust, anger, or fear. Pulling or pushing the muscles in a different direction results in a different expression. But it would be wise not to pull or push your face in public, otherwise people would think you have lost your mind. Take your time to study the muscles of your face and understand the movement and patterns the muscles make and also the directions each muscle makes when it is pushed or pulled or when an opposite muscle in another group is pushed or pulled. This will help you when coloring the face and wrapping your selections and shapes around each various muscle. With all the muscles layered on the complex shapes of each individual's different skulls, it will be quite a tasking challenge rendering the forms of the face just based on the shapes of the muscles. This led to master artists developing a formula to see the muscles and shapes of the face as planes, making it easier to use geometry to bring out the forms of the face in light and shadow. Each individual feature of the face is broken down in three-dimensional form. The nose, the lips, the eyes, the side of the head, the ears, the cheekbones and the jaw. A good way to understand each feature is to practice drawing them from different angles and then lighting them and studying the way light shifts and falls on each of the different planes. As I mentioned earlier in a previous tutorial, look. You will need to be watching all those old tutorials because <laughs> I've been dropping juice. I've been dropping orange juice, fruit juice in all those tutorials. Go up, go watch all those tutorials, watch all of them. I like to use 3D models to study the planes of the face. Now, for those of you that can use 3D programs, you can import 3D models into your program, then light them and study how light falls on the planes. This will get you up to speed in no time. This is the most crucial step to making beautiful and convincing faces. Nailing the lighting on the face brings out the forms and contours of the character and also emphasizes certain features of their face. A three-point lighting setup makes a face feel solid and pop out of the background, but a single light source also does the same thing. It is your duty as an artist to understand the mood and the direction the image is going and how many lighting setups you need or require to sculpt the face properly. It is good to have a strong and clear key light lighten the character. This should be your main light and should at least cover 60% of the forms of the face. If you do this properly, the face will already be convincing and well structured even without using the rim light or the fill light. Now once you have nailed the key light, then you can bring in the rim light or a fill light to furthermore accentuate the parts of the face that are in shadow. When using lighting setups like this, it is good to keep in mind the golden rule of chiaroscuro. Dark on light, light on dark. I'll make a separate video explaining this process. But what it means basically is contrasting your light shapes with the dark background and vice versa. It is important to keep in mind the intensity of each light source so you can control the values of the face. As the fill light cannot be as strong as the key light and the reflected light cannot be as strong as any of them. You can take photos of yourself to furthermore study your lighting. The color zones of the face are areas of the face that are directly affected and influenced by a predominant color. We always see these color zones in master paintings and in real life, but it is easier to notice them on really light skinned people. For us black folk, even when you use a flashlight on the skin, you can barely see the colorations. The top of the head and the areas near the eyebrow are yellowish and sometimes pale or white on some skin tones. The noses and the cheek area are red due to the amount of blood supply that goes through these areas underneath the skin. Some parts of the ears too may be affected with discoloration, especially when a strong light source is hitting the ears from behind. The light goes through the skin of the ears and spreads through it before passing through. This is known as subsurface scattering or SSS for short. The areas of the mouth, chin and jaw are usually bluish grey or blue-green, majorly because of the beard line on men. On women, 
This coloration is mostly harder to notice. It is advisable to keep the colorations of the skin really subtle and minimum to avoid creating a character that will belong in Area 51. But if that's the general idea, well, you can proceed. Now that we have all the knowledge required to color a proper face, let's hop into Photoshop and see how it's done. But before then, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, please go down and click the subscribe button and also click the bell icon so you'll be notified by YouTube whenever I upload a new video to this channel. Let's go to Photoshop. So we are in Photoshop and I have these amazing Superman inks from Rodrigo Lorenzo. He's a good friend of mine and amazing comic artist and illustrator. Uh, <clears throat> I just changed the, um, the layer options to multiply for the line art layer. And then I created a color hold of Superman and then I painted in the background of the sky which was going to be blue and then there is going to be like a really strong sun blazing right right there in the center coming off of his face so that i'm painting that in and then i'm doing it all on the normal layer for the background but i put a layer above the background and i put it on soft light just to kind of get the yellowish colors into the background but i haven't started using it for now so right now i'm just painting in superman's local colors i haven't really started you know taking into consideration the lighting setup i'm going to use on him but i know i'm going to basically light him with the ambient light coming in from the sky so i'm relatively keeping i'm going to keep all the colors towards the blue and then i just created a layer and set it on multiply then use really light blue to kind of get in that blue overlay onto the local colors right now i've started rendering the forms of his face and i'm pretty much doing the rim lights that's coming in from the sun from behind him and i'm just figuring out the shapes and the contours of his face using the inks and drawings that Rodrigo has provided as a reference on the shape of his face. So I'm keeping everything on the um, rim lights pretty warm and I use an overlay layer to, I use an overlay layer with orange to just emphasize how warm the light is. And I just painted it, painted it over the rim light. Now, right now I've started painting, I've started coloring the ambient light coming in from the sky on his face. Now, as you can see, I'm not using the local color of his skin. I'm using blue because the sky is reflecting that blue light and that is what is lighting his face because he's not facing the light source, which is the sun. He's back in the sun and he's facing the ambient light source which is the sky and from a low angle like this all the planes that are facing upwards will be lit directly by the sky i did a short um tutorial talking about like colors of how to get your colors for shadows and all that i pretty much spoke about this in that tutorial so you can watch that maybe at the end of this video just to understand exactly how you go about choosing these colors so you don't like you don't make mistakes trying to light your character with the sky and you kind of don't know what other colors you can use in his shadow because you can see here the other parts that are not hitting the they're not being lit by the ambient light i have left them relatively warm for now so right now I'm just figuring out the planes of his face and still using the guides from the inks as reference for the contours and anatomy of his face. And I just looked at uh, some screenshots of Superman from the movie Man of Steel just to kind of have a feel of the color scheme that movie was. And the movie I... The movie, after I just noticed it a bit, I saw it was really harsh on the teal and orange 
color scheme so i just kept mine a little bit subtle i didn't really use that much of the teal and orange here now i'm still doing everything i'm doing right now is just on a normal layer funny enough i'm not using any layer modes anytime i'm coloring the ambient lights or any other light source i pretty much do it on a normal layer and just select the colors that i would want to use in the image i just select them from the with the color picker or in the uh what's it called the place where you choose the colors that place i just yeah i just choose the color from there and then i just do color everything on a normal layer now i like to use the other layer modes like overlay and soft light just to emphasize certain colors or change the way some colors look maybe they're a bit too desaturated for what i'm going for then i just use the layer modes to just change the colors later on in the image after i've done establishing the colors i want to use originally so right now i'm just painting the trademark s and i kind of want it to be a little bit glossy metallic a little bit and so properties of that kind of material will be real reflectivity so i just use kind of a bright red and then uh, yeah, um, uh, an orange a, a very light shade of orange just to pretty much bump out throughout the shapes of that the shape of that s and then i just left every other thing just fall into the shadows then right now i'm tackling the yellow on the s rendering the forms of his chest and i really wanted to emphasize that harsh strong shininess of the of the material so i made sure i just kept that bit really shiny now right now i felt it was really getting close to what i wanted so i just made a layer above everything on linear dodge and i just like painted in the the glade glow from the sunlight and i started painting in the uh subsurface scattering on his ears and and i created a new layer on soft light just to emphasize the blueness from the sky from the ambient light source and then i started painting in a little bit of the colorations of, of his skin on his nose on his cheeks and pretty much emphasizing the strength of that subsurface scattering right there on his ear now i'm using a soft light layer for the colorations sometimes i do use a color layer but it just depends on how intense i want the coloration to be now i now i'm coloring the reflected lights from the um the s the symbol just a little bit of reflected light because the is it's a the main light source hitting that is just from the ambient light so it shouldn't be that strong but i'm just pretty much exaggerating the effect a little bit just to keep the forms there popping So that was it for today. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel if you haven't, and I will see you in the next video. Peace. And I, ooh.